Things that Chelsea have not quite gone to plan for Todd Bowley in his grand plan to make Chelsea the greatest club in the world. 10th place last season and looking like another mid-table finish this season, we're a long way off getting back to that 2021 Champions League win, that historic night where Kai Havertz scored an all-important winner to make Chelsea champions of Europe and that is going to be the goal in today's rebuild using a realistic database, pick it up from the 5th of February where Chelsea have just been thumped 4-2 to Wolves, we're going to look to turn Chelsea not only into European champions but treble winners in this Football Manager 2024 rebuild. I'm going to look through this Chelsea team it shouldn't be so difficult. You've got the likes of Reese James, 24-year-old, captain of the club, one of the best right-backs in the game and in real life. Ben Chilwell, 27 years old, English, fantastic young left-back, one of the best defenders potentially in the world in a few years in Levi Colville. Unbelievable centre-back who never really realised his potential on Foot Manager, but in real life he certainly will. And here on Foot Manager, we'll be locking him in to be our superstar centre-back with an unbelievable centre-defensive mid-partnership of Moises Caicedo at just 22 years of age and Enzo Fernandez at 23 years of age. You've got two DMs there potentially for the next seven, eight, maybe even nine years. Christopher Nkunku is a brand new signing in central attack midfielder who is finally getting fit and back from injury it's just if he can stay fit he will be a superstar Mikhailo Madrid has been on and off since his move to Chelsea uh, obviously he was heavily linked to a move to Arsenal chose Chelsea things haven't gone so well but here on FM we're gonna make him a superstar and Raheem Sterling seems to be the ever-present man on the wings 29 years of age fantastic pace and just seems to always pop up with a very important goal just like his one against Manchester City very very recently and then Nicholas Jackson as well great dribbling great finishing great pace maybe lacks that composure maybe Maybe isn't a striker. Maybe we're going to convert him into a winger. We'll see what we go ahead and do with him. But there's still the likes of a few players here like Cold Palmer. He has been an absolute revelation for Chelsea this season. Sadly on FM, Cold Palmer is absolutely rubbish. And I'm sure on that winter update, he's going to get a big old upgrade. That's going to be around the start of March. So make sure you're subscribing to the channel because in March, the content is going to fly out. Once all these players are upgraded, best believe we're going to have a special video on some of the wonder kids like Cold Palmer, like Kobe Mainu, getting them huge boosts and how good they could be on the brand new FM24 update. And it doesn't stop there either because young Brazilian striker David Washington could also be a superstar at just 18 years of age. We've got the likes of Dorde Petrovic in goal who has been a very good starter for Chelsea recently over Robert Sanchez. Will he be our keeper for years to come? Probably not, but we shall see what we do with him. Noni Madueke, Romeo Lavia, Chukwameka, Kasaidi, Malang Saar, Axel De Sarsi, Malo Gustu, Leslie Ogawuchu. There is players galore here at Chelsea, and we all know the stories of the recent transfer histories. We can't go back on FM, but just this season, just gone. £393 million spent, £223 million leaving. They've spent over a billion in 18 months. There is a lot of superstars here at the club, and our goal is to simply get them in tune, add a little bit of the old Kempi dust and make them one of the best teams in world football yet again as i pick up on the realistic up to date database as of the 5th of february we're sitting 11th in the table 31 points five points outside of any european places and a grand total of 15 points out of the champions league so that might be a step too far but getting them back into europe is going to be the goal for the second half of the season and just like in real life as well uh, we're here in the semi-finals of the Carabao cup against manchester city uh, chelsea are actually in the final already i know this is just before the date where they would have got to the final as well so a little bit frustrating it looks like we might not be going to the Carabao cup final just like they are in real life which is a good plus for chelsea because that's a little bit of happiness because it's not been happy for the last five years. I've got a lot of mates that are Chelsea fans. They absolutely hate it at the moment. But first of all, we've got to fix this second half of this season in real life and get them back into Europe. And well, we managed to get through City in the semi-finals, but still lost to Liverpool 3-0 in the EFL Cup final, meaning Chelsea haven't lifted a trophy just yet. But back in a final of a competition is good to see. And as well as we have got absolutely battered, which isn't ideal, we are still you know, competing in a trophy. It might be the Energy Drink Cup and teams like Stoke have won it in recent years, but it'll be good to win something. But sadly, that isn't the case for right now. In real life, I believe that could be an absolute catalyst for Chelsea turning their fortunes around. In the FA Cup, we got to the quarterfinals and lost to Leicester a championship side which is a little bit frustrating to lose 2-0 there uh, they ended up getting to the semi-finals and beating Middlesbrough and then got absolutely pumped by Manchester City in the final so that could have been us in the final there against City probably also losing that one so it wouldn't have been the end of the world but we did have a big old uptake in form for the second half of the season in the Premier League and ended up getting into sixth place meaning Europa League football for Chelsea which I believe is a fantastic second half of the season Spurs and Aston Villa securing their Champions League places with a fifth place European 
coefficient rankings. Chelsea overtaking Manchester United. You can see in the background, I'm a United fan. This would be quite the drop off and I would get a lot of banter from my Chelsea mates for us falling off quite as much as this. So I pray this does not happen. And at least I'm not a Newcastle fan down in 11th. A nice little reverse for them too there. But uh, very good for Chelsea in sixth place. The star players in the second half of this season were who you'd expect. Christopher Nkunku, Raheem Sterling and Nick Jackson. Like I've said, Cole Palmer, just sadly on FM at the moment, is not very good. Six starts, 30 on the bench, four goals. It's decent, but you can only ever turn him into a good Premier League player. And that takes a lot of game time. So I might cash in on Cole Palmer. Per, trust me, Chelsea fans, I wish that was not the case. I would love to use Cole Palmer and make him one of the best cams in the world. Sadly, that's just not possible on uh, the vanilla version of FM. So you'd have to wait until the winter update to see how good Cole Palmer could really be in real life. Genuinely, he's an exciting talent that I think could take Chelsea to the next level. He is an absolute superstar. And if Nkunku gets fit, moving Nkunku up top, Cole Palmer in cam, Chelsea are going to cook. Now, Todd Bowley has given us £90 million pounds and £350,000 uh, in wage budget as well. So lots and lots of money here at the club, which is great to see. We know Chelsea have lots of money. I don't actually think there's a lot to go and buy. I also did this simulation around two weeks ago. So did I go crazy and sign loads of players? No, I did not. Just the free signings. And number one is Sir Hal Garashi, which is an unbelievable piece of business. This guy's got a release clause of £17 million and is hotly tipped to make a big move in this summer. Was tipped to potentially go in January to Manchester United. Didn't quite pan out. So we've sold him here at Chelsea. He's consistent. He loves big matches. He's 28 years of age, so a perfect sort of rotational backup striker to Nicholas Jackson. You never know. Maybe even starting. Great finishing, composure, pace is decent. Six foot two. Can also take penalties. So if we do get to a final of anything, this man is going to be on the penalty spot. He plays the shots as well, which for FM is a very, very key little trait for him. So welcome in signing number one, Sir Hagarashi for £17 million. Actually a clever signing, as is the cover star, Nico Jetta Williams. This guy is simply unbelievable. 21 years of old, Spanish international, 17 determination, means he's going to grow a hell of a lot and very, very quickly. He is but double-footed. He cuts inside from both wings. Great dribbling, great pace, consistent. £43 million is what I got him for. An absolute bargain in a couple of years time this guy's always around 200 million pounds you can see already his value now he's joined chelsea 107 million pounds an absolute bargain to bring in the superstar of nico williams and my final signing is a young goalkeeper to take over from petrovic and robert sanchez any guesses philip jorgensen is the man from villarreal 20 determination great area reach great strength agility and reflexes for a keeper again very very important and he loves big matches so we are building a club of leaders who are ready to play in big matches they can take penalties they can save penalties and they can be the heroes he was expensive 61 million pounds but as a goalkeeper for the next five years i'm not too fussed they spent around 80 on kepa arifa balaga and this guy is a million times better than him our only real sale was malang sar has left the club to join fulham for 5.5 million pounds sadly he's just not quite good enough and i don't think he ever will be and actually that was a bold faced lie because there's actually another screen around to click on to see the rest of the sales and trevor chalabar has joined al halal for 39 million pounds chelsea fans i know you would take that right now don't get me wrong this guy is a chelsea legend through the academy not a legend Legend. That's maybe a little bit too far, but a very good, you know, through the academy Chelsea player. But with the whole thing, Chelsea have got at the moment with the amortization, having to sell uh, players that are homegrown to reach FFP rules, 40 million quid for Trevor Chalibur off to Saudi. He's now earning 700,000 pounds a week. I think he's happy with the bag he has taken. So see you later, Trevor Chalibur. Uh, Robert Sanchez has gone to Al Nassar for 21 million pounds as well. I mean, why not sell him? We spent 20 million on him. We sold him for 21. Petrovic overtook him in terms of our goalkeeper rankings. The end of last season which probably shows the goalkeeping standard here at Chelsea and why Philip Jorgensen was so needed another one selling of a youth talent which is going to be probably a superstar in real life is Jimmy J Morgan this guy looks absolutely fantastic but 13 million pounds we got overall he had to be sold. Now, he was actually picked up for £3 million by Chelsea, but that is still going to be around £10 million worth of profit going against the FFP. I've tried to keep this semi-realistic. We might get a little bit more unrealistic as we go into the future, but I've tried to be a little bit clever with who I'm selling, who I'm signing, and not just splashing the cash on a whole host of ridiculous players, which means the team is actually looking like so. It's Philip Jorgensen in goal with Reese James and Chill as the two fullbacks. Fafana and Colville at centre-back with Caicedo and Enzo Fernandez in DM. Nico Williams, Mikhailo 
Modric, Nkunku, and Serhal Garashi up top. Petrovic, Malak Gusto, Badia Shield, and Thiago Silva with Mark Kukurea are the backup defenders and goalkeeper. Romeo Lavia and Leslie Ogawuchu as the backup DMs with Noni Madueke, Cole Palmer, Raheem Sterling, and Nicholas Jackson as the backup forwards. Also keeping the club, Gabriel Slaninia, Carlos, uh, sorry, Carney Chukwameka, Diego Moreira, and David Washington to field up a big old squad where we can compete in four very important competitions. I don't just want to win one trophy this season. I want a couple. The Europa League, FA Cup, Carabao Cup, and the Premier League. That is what we're in this season. Let's see what we can win. Well, sadly, we kicked the season off in the Carabao Cup, losing 2-1 to Manchester City, even though we absolutely dominated them with 12 shots to their five. They may have had more possession, but we were certainly the better side, just getting outclassed by goals from Erling Haaland and Mateus Nunez. But good to see Christopher Nkunku getting a goal in a final for Chelsea, which is absolutely fantastic. But is that going to be the only final we play in this season? What do you think? Well, of course it's not. I mean, with Chelsea in the Europa League, we have to go ahead and win this one. A great ball there from Levi Colville. A ball over the top to Serhal Garashi, who batters it home just after halftime to get us off to 1-0 lead until Mudrik bursts on the left-hand side, finds Enzo Fernandez, who puts in an absolute perler personana to make it 2-0. Chilwell there with a the clearance, and Rashford picks it up, finds Scott McTominay. Old Scotty too hot. He has been on a big scoring run in recent times of real life, and it looks like it's the same one FM, making it 2-1 Manchester United now trying to build up from the back but that man Cold Palmer is there to intercept finds Nico Williams who bats at home for 3-1 on the 82nd minute and it wasn't even all over there we fancied the fourth Madueke to Cole Palmer Garassi turns finishes 4-1 Chelsea Europa League winners means we're back in the Champions League next season regardless of how the league went now going on to the FA Cup things weren't quite as good we got knocked out in the fifth round sadly by Manchester City of course one of the best teams in world football getting drawn against them is a little bit of bad luck they didn't go on to win it the better side of Manchester did 1-0 on penalties United with Victor Ossiman up front I mean I didn't even mention that in the final it shows how quiet we kept him there are winners of the FA Cup but in the Premier League the winners are Serhal Garashi and Chelsea a fantastic season a fantastic turnaround in form from the last couple of years for Chelsea and already in just a couple of seasons we managed to get them into being Premier League champions and Europa League winners 84 points a 60 goal difference 26 wins 6 draws and 6 losses and I really haven't changed too much we've just managed to get quite lucky with injuries Someone like Christopher Nkunku seems to be injured a hell of a lot in real life. But here on FM, we've managed to keep him fit. 13 assists, 11 per of the matches, a 7.54 average rating. Not top of the chart because that's Haaland, who also chops the charts of the goals scored. And our brand new signing for £17 million, Garashi with 20 goals is incredibly, incredibly impressive. We scored the most goals in the entire league, scoring 89 and conceding just 29. The joint top with both Liverpool and Manchester City. We weren't anywhere to be seen on the possession. We were very much a quick counter-attacking side who had a hell of a lot of shots and converted as many as we could. Now checking out the data hub. Things were looking great in terms of this as well. 2.34 goals scored per game, considering just 0.76. We've made them defensively sound and we're scoring a lot of goals. And the goals are coming from Serhal Garashi. 32 goals in 35 games and 13 off the bench is incredibly impressive. Well, and Kunku draws 20 goals and 20 assists to be our most goal-contributed man on the team an incredibly impressive season for Christopher Nkunku with brand new signing Nico Williams also getting 17 goals and 10 assists and then Nicholas Jackson in just 18 starts and 8 off the bench 17 goals as well proving that pace off the bench to be absolutely pivotal Raheem Sterling 16 and 10 Cole Palmer as a backup actually done very very well 15 games 31 off the bench however 11 goals and 7 assists while Mikhailo Mudrik dropped just 10 and 12 22 assists for our star man Reese James and a 10 assist for Enzo Fernandez as well. Ben Chua also dropping 10 goals and 12 assists is incredibly impressive from left back. We have done very, very well. I mean, the rebuild isn't, of course, over. The goal is the treble. The goal is the Champions League. We have managed to sell Romelu Lukaku and incoming already is a superstar in real life, Kendry Payers. This guy looks to be an absolute stud. Unbelievable. 18 years of age has really made his appearance for Ecuador. Great flair, dribbling, pace. We'll see what we can get this guy out of in five years. Uh, we have got 126 million to spend. 400,000 pounds 
pounds in wage budget as well now the finances here at chelsea are a little bit rough because of the amount of uh, debt and transfer we've got 280 million pounds and 140 million pounds in their debt so we need to be semi clever with signings again i done this a couple of weeks ago was i clever when well, nicholas jackson was the first man out of the door and it wasn't the plan he was actually very good last season as our backup striker but 62 million is a lot for a backup striker and he's never going to be our superstar and he was the first of a 290 million pounds sales here at chelsea i have tried to be very very clever it looks like and i only brought in 90 million pounds so around 180 million pounds worth of profit benoit badia shield is the next one to go ahead and leave 52 million pounds after being a rotation option here at chelsea for the last couple of seasons he's off to spurs they can take our backups they're never gonna be chelsea let's be honest benoit badia shield has also gone as has noni madaweke i think this guy could be a superstar in real life but i've seen a few things about nico williams and him actually nico williams linked with chelsea in real life recently and uh, he's nico williams seemed to be a madaweke that can finish Sadly, Madueke has become the backup and he is off to Leeds. We paid £31 million for him. We signed him for £31 million as well. So quite a good sale. We managed to keep the value in him, even though he's been a backup for the last couple of years. So a decent one on my behalf. Conor Gallagher has been fantastic for Chelsea recently. We've sold him to Wolves for £24 million, where he was, uh, we actually did that last season, didn't even touch on it. He was absolutely rubbish at Wolves and is now a championship player. So goodbye Conor Gallagher I suppose from last season apologies for not guys keeping you guys updated on that one not very good from me and then a couple of only other big ones number one being Robin Lukaku was finding the club to go to AC Milan it took ages to get him gone last season he was on loan there he is now signed there for around 23 million pounds and a big sale of Raheem Sterling has left to Al Etihad 800,000 pounds a week is what he's earning now he was very very good for us but £60 million for a 30-year-old, we have to accept. Again, we kept that value. We sold £10 million on from what we paid for him three years ago. And he's now 30 years of age. So a sale we had to go ahead and make when the money came in for him. And again, he was never going to turn down £825,000 in wages. He's extremely consistent. loves big matches. We know how good Raheem Sterling is. And now 100 caps for England as well. A nice little Easter egg in there for us. But it's time to move on to some signings. And obviously, Kendry Payers has joined the club. But our next signing is... Arnaud Calimendo. This guy is a fantastic French striker. 16 finishing, 15 composure. Great pace. Great off the ball work for me. An upgrade on Nick Jackson for a hell of a lot cheaper. £38 million. Dropped 13 goals in the French League last season. Him and Serha Garashi could be a fantastic rotation together. He's consistent. He loves big matches. He is hopefully going to be the superstar of Chelsea for years to come and was actually our biggest signing in this whole window. Our second was Danny Namasso, or you might know him as Danny loader from reading a few years back he's been killing it over at porto recently and comes in as our raheem sterling rotational option rotation player so he's very very good a value of 50 million pounds spent 34 million pounds on him after he just dropped eight goals and four assists in 18 games which is very very impressive he's consistent he's very very good he's right footed playing with the left but can also play cam or striker so a good player to bring in danny namasa welcome to the club a backup to ben chill well now that mark cucarella has also left the club is patrick dorgu a young 20 year old danish left back for 10 million pounds i signed him a lot because he's simply too good and the value is always there with him now got a value of 40 million pounds after just signing on the dotted line and my final signing is mika marmal 7 million pounds to come in as a backup our new benoit badia shield an absolute bargain and an absolute no-brainer to bring in a spanish defender that can play the ball and you'll be impressed because we've actually got 200 million pounds still in the transfer budget £800,000 still in the wage budget. The finances are looking a lot better. The debt is a little bit cleared now. We've cleared £110 million off of that. I think we've done a very good job while keeping the team very, very strong. Jorgensen in goal. Reese James, Fafana, Colville, Ben, Chilwell, Enzo Fernandez, Monte Casado, Nico Williams, Nkunku, Madrid, Calimendo, Petrovic, Malagusto, Tiago Silva, Mika Marmo, Dorgo, uh, Lavia, Ugawuchu, Cole Palmer, Karni Chikawameka, Danny Namaso, and Sir Hal Garashi. We had to make a big whole host of sales to clear off the ridiculous size of this Chelsea squad. It's now actually semi-normal. There are still a lot of players down the development centre that are going to be here for years that might never be able to sell, might never grow. We will see. But right now, the squad is at a much better level. We're already Premier League champions. Can we go back to back? Will you join me here in the Carabao Cup where for three seasons in a row, Chelsea have got to the final. Could we finally win it? Well, a deflected goal from Moises Caicedo goes off to a fantastic 
fantastic start in just 28 seconds and Manchester United were being very silly with the ball at the back and Kunku pips it, finds Kalimundo, he makes it 2-0. Manchester United are not over there though, Luke Shaw playing in that inverted wing back role finds Bruno Fernandes to find Marcus Rashford, finishes past Jorgensen to make it 2-1. But that was all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. We are EFL Cup winners after three years of trying. We have finally made it ours. And again, no sign of Victor Ossiman. We have kept him quiet in every game we have played against him. And we are EFL Cup final winners for the first time in a very long time. And something else which we have not lifted in many, many years from the Chelsea side of things is the Community Shield because we've never been in it. This year we were in it and we also won it 3-1. I'm not going to show you the highlights. It was against Manchester United. A Caicedo own goal, but a Reese James in Kunku and then of Fernandez goal got us 3-1 winners and we're not only just Carabao Cup winners we're also uh, was it Community Shield winners which is absolutely fantastic now the Champions League was a step too far we got quarter final by Real Madrid losing 3-1 overall losing 2-0 at the Bernabeu isn't the worst thing in the world I'm actually quite happy with how we performed in this Real Madrid are the best team in the world. They've gone on to go ahead and win it as well, beating Chelsea 3 0 on penalties, winning the Champions League. Um, I certainly want to get us back to that night in 2021. I was out at the pub with all my mates for that night, and getting them that joy back here on FM in a virtual world would be very, very fun to go ahead and do. Now, back to back Premier League trophies is something we have managed to do. 87 points, 50 goal difference, 27 wins, 6 draws, and 5 losses in Kunku. Top of the average rate in this time, 10, goal, uh, 10 assists, second behind Man and Nani Madueke, who's been brilliant over at Leeds. Philip Jorgensen, second on the clean sheets behind Vicario, but number one is the team, and that is the most important thing. We are winners of the league. Absolutely fantastic. Buzzing with this one, and our goals-wise as well, scoring the most on 80, conceding just 30, seven behind Spurs, which were very, very good this season. Keeping 53% of the ball this season was much better than last season, but fewer shots against, most shots for an exciting team to watch with Kalimundo stepping up to be the superstar striker. 28 goals and 4 assists in 61 appearances. And Kunku, 20 and 18. And even though his stats aren't growing, Cole Palmer, 14 starts, 37 on the bench, 14 goals and 15 assists. I'll tell you what, that's still a pretty good return as a backup. As is 12 goals in just three starts and 13 off the bench for Sir Hal Garashi. You can see I locked in Kali Mundo to be our striker because I wanted to see if he could become a superstar. And he has grown a little bit. He is still only three star, so maybe he isn't the man for years and years to come. But we shall see. He still is very, very good. And Garashi, being 30 years of age, is happy to be a backup. He's now wanted by, I believe, clubs in Saudi. He is indeed 40 million quid. I tell you what, I take that right now. Uh, Reese James, 12 goals and eight assists. Nico Williams, 11 and nine. Maybe not impressive quite as much as we'd like. Danny Namasa, on the other hand, 10 goals, 5 assists in 27 starts. Very, very happy with that signing. An unbelievable player on this year's FM. Mikhail Madrid, just 10 assists and 6 goals. Maybe it's time to move on from him. I mean, he's progressing very well. He looks very, very good. He's been okay for us. A 6.96 this season, a 6.97 last season, a 6.7 in the second half of the season were there. He's not got over a 7, a hundred million pound value. Is it time to move on from Mikhailo Madrid? Let me know in the comments down below if I should be moving on. Now, transfer budget wise, we've got 200 million, 600,000 pounds in wage budget. Lots of money here at the club. The debt of actual debt is now all cleared. Just 195 million pounds in transfer debt, which I don't believe I can actually do anything about. It's just what the, um, you know, the amortization fees are. And we, we can't really do anything about that. It is what it is. Thank you, Big Todd, for putting us in this massive predicament. But the season four, I don't think we'll go back to back to back in the Premier League. I don't think I've ever done that before with Chelsea, but it'll be good fun to see if we could, but what sign is going to come in to make the dream possible. And if I can just give a quick shout out to the legends on screen right now, the Patreon members, there is around 20 people that are paid Patreon members that get these access to these rebuild files. You see every single rebuild goes up on Patreon and there's around a hundred other people on there as well that are signed up to Patreon on the free tier where you just get notifications every single time a video goes live. And if there's a rebuild, you want to go ahead and uh, purchase it makes it very very easy for you because you'll see the video you can then just go back on patreon upgrade your membership to the five pound a month tier and it helps me out massively so go ahead and join on patreon below even if it's the free tier it helps support me massively and push the patreon and the patreon genuinely is an absolute game changer i am so thankful to everyone that is over there 
head down there to the description, sign up to Patreon for free, and there might be a reboot that tickles your fancy. Five pound a month, you can help your boy out. Well, as predicted, Sir Hal Garassi has left to Al Nassar. Thank you very much, Garassi. You were a fantastic starting striker in season one and back up last season for just £17 million. Pounds. We have doubled that to 39. So I'd want to Saudi. How much is he earning now? 600k. He is loving life. An unbelievable striker. If you need someone to go ahead and bag you goals for just 17 million pounds, is genuinely an absolute game changer. That trophy final we've sadly sold for just 9 million quid to Notts Forest. I have made him very, very good on rebuilds previously to this one, but actually using with Chelsea is very difficult because he's not quite the standard you need at the start. As you can see, he was on loan at Forest last season, scored a goal in the championship. Not good enough for us. Goodbye, Dash Rafana. The only other sale is the legend of Mark Kukurea, who has gone to Newcastle for £37 million. Unbelievable business by myself, if I do say so. We obviously paid 60 for him a few years back. He was very, very good for us last season and the season before, but to get him gone was needed. Patrick Dorgu can now progress into our backup behind Ben Chilwell and we can say goodbye to him because he was just injured at the start of last season for a long old time. Hence why I didn't quite realise. But again, I've been very, very clever in terms of signings this season. Just £57 million spent and two free agents. So welcome in Gabri Vega, who was over at Al Ali in Saudi Arabia in real life. Looked like an unbelievable talent over at Celta. Decided to sell his soul to over at Al Ali where he was very, very good on this year's game, of course. But £140,000 a week is a lot, but a free signing is consistent. He likes big matches. He He's great off the ball, great work rate. I don't really know where he fits in. I've signed him to be a backup DM. I don't know if he's going to develop there very much. I have got training on him there. I don't think he's good enough to be our cam. We'll see what happens with him. A little bit of a nervous signing, but for free, worst case scenario, we send him for 15 million quid and we move on with our lives. Same as Lazar Samartovic, who was an unbelievable cam at Udinese, becomes a free agent every single time at PlayFM. This time I've actually decided to sign him. He is much more of our cam that we were looking for. Great first touch, long shots, dribbling, technique, vision, flair, work rate. He is a fantastic central tag midfielder. He shoots from distance. I mean, He's the sort of player we, you, you know, you absolutely love watching. He has got two caps for Serbia, 150k a week, a free signing, a little bit injury prone. Again, if it doesn't work out, there's a minimum of 30 million pounds of value there. I've tried to be clever, so I brought in Gabby Goal. I mean, it's never worked for him in Europe, has it? He's always smashing it in Brazil. Bring him to Europe. He absolutely flops. Was awful at Inter Milan uh, every single time he's been here. Wasn't great at Benfica. But in Brazil, he's unbelievable. So we decided we'll make him unbelievable with Chelsea, hopefully. £28 million is our new backup instead of Sir Hal Garassi. A very similar age profile. 29 years of age. Extremely consistent. Loves big matches. Great finishing. Great composure. Great pace. Left-footed. 5 foot 10 Great leadership off the ball. Determination. Penalty taking. Vision. A leading Premier League goal scoring striker. Will he be that man? I'm not 100% sure. I think this is a bit inflated because he is in the Brazilian leagues. But if he does score, I mean, even 10 goals for us. We've actually made him good in Europe. I'll be very happy if Gabby Gold comes good. Just £29 million. And the only other one is someone that I have never seen on FM before is Amadou uh, Dumbia. He is a French centre-back CDM or central midfielder. I believe he starts off at Nice on FM and uh, he becomes a very, very good player. He was on a Blackburn last season. This one in the championship played a few goals, but at £28 uh, million pounds for an 18-year-old with these sorts of stats, with this great determination, great tackling, technique, first touch, a ball-playing defender, if I have ever seen one, I'm going to make him one. He is hopefully going to be fantastic for us. Maybe not in this rebuild, but on the Patreon. Like I said, if you go ahead and you keep playing the save, this guy could be your starting centre-back for a lot of years to come. And he does come straight into the bench. Not quite the starting 11 because the starting 11 is fantastic. Philip Jorgensen in goal. Rhys James, Fafana, Colville and Chilwell is the same back five we've had for pretty much the whole of this rebuild with Caicedo and Fernandez in front. This Chelsea team is very, very similar to what it is in real life because it's just a case the players are very young. There is a lot of gelling to do. We've sold a lot of dead wood and I think that's the main issue at Chelsea. Nico Williams on the right with Keeper Mudrick on the left in Kunku and Cam Kalimendo up top Gabriel Slaninia Malo Gusto uh, Dumbuya Miko Marmo Patrick Dorgu Romeo Lavia Gabri Vega Cole Palmer Lazar Smarzovic Danny Namasso and Gabby Gol are our backups back to back to back Premier League titles would be incredible a Champions League is what we're looking for though I mean the treble is the ultimate goal well it's not going to happen this season so we're going to have to go into season number 5 because we've lost to Leeds in the 4th round of the FA Cup 
Fantastic start, lads. But we have made a thing of making the Energy Drink Cup our cup to win every single year. Cole Palmer gets us off to a fantastic start. 38 minutes in, blasting home to make it 1-0. We then picks it up in the box, finds Ben Chilwell, finds Kelly Window, drops to Mikhailo Mudrick, and he makes it 2-0. And we were winners against Manchester United. A very simple game. We absolutely dominated them. EFL Cup winners. It's not the FA Cup, so we can't win the treble, but it's one certainly ticked off, and the Champions League went very well this year. We got all the way to the semi-finals. We're here at the Etihad against Manchester City. Levi Colville made a little bit of an issue, and Yao Felix made it 1-0 to City, and he celebrated as well. How dare he? He was here for six months. Nico Williams on the ball, finds Malo Gusto at the right, finds Nkunku in the box, and he makes it 1-1 for his first goal of the game. Yao Felix down the ball, finds Guido Rodriguez to Yao Felix to Rico Lewis. So many attacks. Ferran Torres back at City makes it 2-1 and it was looking very, very difficult because Ferran Torres picked up the ball, spun past Ben Chilwell, knocked it back to Chuameni, who found Haaland, who back it in for 3-1. But we had a lot of fight about us, and Christian Nkunku was that guy. An unbelievable free kick to make it 3-2, and then some high press from Mika Marmol. Played Nkunku down the line, he wanted the Champions League hat-trick, and he goes ahead and gets it and sets up the return leg at Stamford Bridge. Where a couple of unsung heroes were the heroes. Nico Williams finds Malo Gusto, finds the ball in the box to Danny Namasso to make it 1-0 in 21 minutes. And we fast forward to the 85th minute, Mika Marmol darting it down the left hand signs find Danny Namasso to Gabby Goal to make it 2-0 Gabby Goal puts us into a Champions League final where we faced up against PSG but it just wasn't meant to be Osmane Dembele finds a ball into the box to Victor Giorquez in the 77th minute and PSG win 1-0 absolutely heartbreaking in season four still no Champions League like 2021 it's going to be a difficult goal. We are going to make it happen. But this Champions League PSG team is a joke. Musiala, Mbappe, Martinelli, Agate, Vitinha, Asensio, Hakimi, Mukiele, Hernandez, Fernandez, uh, Mendes, sorry, and Donnarumma. The team's a joke. We went out there with Jorgensen in goal. James, Fafana, Colville, Chilwell, Caicedo, Fernandez, Nico Williams, Nkunku, Mudrik, and Cali Mendo. We probably should have played the likes of Gabi Go and Daniel Amasso because they smashed it in the semi-finals. But sadly, it wasn't meant to be. But back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back Premier League titles is Chelsea. Something that, as I don't know, have ever happened in Chelsea's history. It might have done back in the, uh, the old Mourinho days. Let's go down here. They never won three in a row. There was two in a row in 05, uh, 04, 05, 05, 06. But... Chelsea have never done three in a row until today. So welcome, Chelsea fans. I know I'm an absolute legend. Calimundo, 20 goals. and Kunku was 7.37. But the top assist man was captain, leader, legend, Reese James. 83 points. We scored the second most goals on just 72 and conceded the second least on 32. Possession-wise, Aston Villa, we were nowhere to be seen. We had lots of shots. We scored lots of goals. And they all come from Arnaud Calimundo. Now, the goal scoring has definitely dropped off this season. And Kunku was 7 and 10. Calimundo with 25 and 3. We are missing a superstar striker, it looks like. Nico Williams, 13 and 4. Dane Namasso, 10 and 7. Cole Palmer still dropping 25 starts, 21 off the bench. I mean, I have said this guy is not the greatest on FM. He has progressed quite well and he's been a very good bit part player for us over the last four years. I'm very happy with actually how he has turned out because I know sometimes in saves, he ends up as a championship player at Blackburn, which is just stupidly unrealistic because I don't even think when we're looking at him at Man City, he was never going to be that bad. He was always going to be a very good Premier League player. So poor from FM, really. A massive, massive oversight. And we call it Madrid 7 and 8, Ben Chilwell 5 and 11 and 19 assists for our star man, Reese James. I'm very, very happy with how things are going. But I think this is the season we can absolutely go for it. The treble is needed. We have a little bit of debt still, a little bit of transfer debt. Things have got a little bit, you know, more rough as the season goes on. But winning a Champions League would fix it all. Top Bowley, of course, believes in us. £232 million pounds in transfer budget. He just has so much money. And I think we've been very, very clever, actually, in this rebuild. £57 million pounds spent there. 56 outgoing. 123 outgoing. £55 million pounds spent. 319 outgoing. £52 million pounds pounds spent 5 million outgoing 121 million pounds spent and that is it so around 
400 million outgoing and around 250 ingoing. I'm quite happy with that. Four years of the rebuild. We have done very, very well. But season five is always silly season because after this, I'm done. And I have to leave you guys on Patreon, an unbelievable team. So, of course, I spent 106 million on the best striker on FM. Evan Ferguson, the cover star next to Nico Williams. It's taken some time to get him in, but the superstar striker is finally here. Unbelievable finishing, heading, concentration, composure, pace. At this point, he is the real deal. 22 caps, uh, sorry, 40 caps for Ireland with 22 goals. Over at Brighton, he's been fairly decent. Dropped 14 last season. His first go season in double figures. So we triggered £106 million. We have now got an unbelievable striker to finish off the balls into the box that we do end up having. And Paul Vanner has also come in from Bayern Munich. Has played a few games over there. Been a bit of a rotational option with the second team and the first team. Two-star player, five-star potential. Great player. We all know Paul Vanner. Can play pretty much anywhere on the pitch other than right back, centre back and goalkeeper. So we'll certainly take him as a rotation option and it's just simply fantastic on this year's FM. An unbelievable player and the squad is looking great. And there's also someone that I am very excited about who has now broken in to the first team and that man is Kendry Payers. Uh, he's very consistent, very quick, very good dribbling, very good flair. He's now 20 years of age. We looked at him a few seasons ago. He's progressed a hell of a lot while being out on loan at Atletico Madrid where he dropped a 7.2 average rating in 34 games. So he's certainly good enough for the top level of football Football, and he comes in on the bench for this Chelsea team with Philip Jorgensen in goal, Rich James, Wesley Fofana, Levi Colville, Ben Chilwell, Enzo Fernandez, Moises Caicedo, Nico Williams, Nkunku, Mudrick, Evan Ferguson is an unbelievable team with Slaninia in goal, Malagusto, Dumboya, Mika Marmol, Patrick Dorgu, Romeo Lavia, Gabri Vega, Paul Vanner, Cold Palmer, Grendry Payez, Kalimundo, Petrovic, Ogawuchu, Dave Namaso, and Carney Chukwameka. What a team. What a squad. This is definitely treble winning quality. So let's see if we can do it. Season five. Can we finally win the all important treble? We've got a bit of a thing for the Energy Drink Cup, haven't we? We've got to the final in every single season. And uh, we've won it again here against Manchester City with Mudrick getting off to a fantastic start. Finds a ball at the right to Reese James. Darts down. Finds a ball to win Kunku. He blasts it home to make it 2 0. And we were Energy Drink Cup winners yet again here at Chelsea. It's our favourite thing to go ahead and win. In the FA Cup, we've not even won just yet. Or have we? Because we faced off against West Ham of all teams in the final. And Nico Williams finds a great ball through to Nkunku to make it 1-0 in 36 minutes. But West Ham weren't quite done. Mavropanos finds a ball into Nipan at West Ham. Back to Alvarez to Lewis Hall to Amari Kellyman, who has developed very, very well in this save. And he makes it 1-0. But you know we're not done. Kendry Payers down the line to Dumboya to Malo Gusto, who beats his man and it puts an effort into the bottom corner. I did not know what the keeper was doing there, but it's a fantastic finish. Chilwell finds Cali Window down the line to Gusto again. Gets into the box, finds it into Nkunku, bats it home for 3-1. He has been a superstar in this rebuild and helps us do the domestic double. The FA Cup, the Caribou Cup, and guess what? The domestic treble is complete. We've also won the Premier League, 87 points. Four Premier Leagues in a row for Chelsea. Mr. Consistent, they call me. Unbelievable we have been. Uh, 28 uh, wins, three draws and seven losses. 52 goal difference. Evan Ferguson, 15 goals on that top goal scorer sheet. And Kunku and Reese James, unbelievable. Reese James, 18 assists this season. And Kunku, second in player of the matches. Uh, team stats, we scored lots of goals, 88. Conceded just 36. Possession-wise, not keeping too much. We had a lot of shots. We conceded very little. But in terms of goal scoring, this season Evan Ferguson dropped 28 goals and three assists which I think is a very very good season for him he is still unbelievable I mean yeah best striker in the game without hands and without, without a doubt if you get the right Evan Ferguson he will be unbelievable you get the wrong Evan Ferguson he's absolutely useless luckily this time we've got the right one uh Kelly Mundo is the backup 17 starts 19 goals absolutely brilliant and Cuckoo 18 and 11 Cole Palmer 14 and 11 I'm very, very happy with what we've got out of Cole Palmer. I can't lie. And for Chelsea fans that have never managed to get him good, maybe this save is the one for you. Nico Williams, 13 and 13. Kendry Payers has come into the first team. Got 12 goals and six assists. What a player he is. He is unbelievable. Mudrick, just 10 and 8. Never really got going across the whole rebuild. He was decent. 17 dribbling, good flair, great pace. 141 games, dropped a 7.16 this season. But... Wasn't unbelievable for us, the whole rebuild, really. Reese James, 20 assists. Malo Gusto was his backup with 13 assists as well. So that right-hand side was very, very good. But there is one thing that I have not got into just yet. And that is the Champions League. And we're going to go right from the very beginning. The round of 16 against Tottenham Hotspur. Where we ended up losing 3-1 in the first leg. 
and two goals from a certain Connor Gallagher put us to the sword. He gets one early on. And then an own goal here, which I just can't believe from Levi Colville. He's got so unlucky. Deflection puts on the crossbar. In off the crossbar. Goal. And that was another shot from Conor Gallagher as well. And he's going to go ahead and, and basically get a hat trick because it drops to him there after an Ivan Tone deflection. And Spurs have got so lucky. We are going to get a goal back. Evan Ferguson finds Nico Williams. And Kunku drives through the middle and batters it home to make it 3 1. But that's it. And it sets up a very difficult tie at Stamford Bridge. Where Nkunku is going to go ahead and get us off to an unbelievable start. Nico Williams finds Gusto. Nkunku drives through. Nicholas Heidel, nowhere to be seen. But there was no more goals until the 72nd minute. And it was Hyung Min Son who scores an unbelievable free kick. And that was that. We're at the Champions League in the round of 16. So the goal of winning the treble has not been completed. Now, I think this rebuild has been extremely, extremely successful. I think we've done a very clever Chelsea rebuild. We've not spent loads and loads of money. We've sold lots and lots of dead wood. We've won four Premier Leagues in a row, which is unheard of for Chelsea. We've won a, a, an FA Cup, which is very, very good. We've won three Carabao Cups and got to five finals and a Europa League. But no Champions League. Is this rebuild an absolute fail? Let me down in the comments down below. Check out the video down here to scout the best wonder kids. And just down here is the Moneyball rebuild of Copenhagen, which you guys have been absolutely loving. Thank you for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.